Okay, now can you see my screen? Let's see if that's better now. Can you see the screen? I can hear but couldn't see the screen. So hopefully, yes, yes, okay, now we have a screen. Woohoo! So we're going to um, show you what our specials are for this month first off. Um, it is our storybook. So any project that says storybook in the name, they are 10% off through Monday, midnight Monday. So you need to make sure you take advantage of that. Um, if you're looking for some inspiration, here's a few uh, templates that are in the uh, template gallery that might strike your interest. If you need to do your year in review, we have one happy year. It's a 12 by 12. You'll see the template number there. That's the one that says Anderson 2015 on it. Maybe you have vacation coming up where you went on vacation last year and haven't uh, recorded those memories. The Disneyland book is a fun one, and even if you haven't been to Disneyland, this one has a great layout, and it's really easy to just drop your photos in, swap out your embellishments and colored paper, and you're ready to go. And this one's an 8x8, but there are additional sizes on that one as well. Then there's Got Game. Seems like we're heading into support seasons, although if you uh, have... Kids that are high school or junior high, maybe that's a year-round experience, but it seems like spring always makes people think of sports. So if you need to do some sports uh, books, we have some, several of them. This one's got game, and this is showing an 8x8, but it also comes in some additional sizes. So if you're looking for ways to spend that or get that 10% savings, um, there's some templates for you, or just go to the template gallery and look at storybooks, and you'll have lots of different options. And the things we're going to show you tonight about scrap pages apply beautifully for storybooks as well. So we're going to start off. Um, Brooke is going to talk about how to uh, customize using um, templates. So Brooke, I'm going to turn it over to you. You get to talk for a bit, and then we're going to let her dive into uh, studio. Sorry, we're experiencing some technical difficulties. Like I said, it's been one of those days when you're like, wow, hmm. Could we just have a do-over? Maybe it was the whole week. Anyone else feeling that way about today? So while we're waiting for Brooke to figure out that, I'm going to give away some points. We're going to give away 25 points to one of our early bird attendees, and it's going to go to Marge Mitchell. Marge Mitchell, if you will um, email us, uh, you can email, hmm, well, you know what, we're going to look you up and we'll email you. But anyways, it's Marge Mitchell. We're going to give you 25 points just for showing up for class tonight. So I'm going to, um, oh, yeah, Jennifer. Thank you, Jennifer. I'm glad it's not just us. Entire week, huh? Oh, my goodness. It's been crazy. Okay, I'm going to put this on hold for just a second. Let's try see how Brooke did. Oh, there's Brooke right there. Yay. Apparently Yay. Okay, we can hear Brooke. decided to cut off my phone. <laughs> So I had to call back in. We're good now. Okay. okay. Go ahead so just, and uh, are you on your phone or your headset? I'm on my headset. Okay, because so we can hear a lot of feedback on it. So may have to have you change. Okay, but, I can hold my handset okay. if I need to. Are we good? Okay, go ahead and see how it goes. Yep. Okay, just let me know. Okay, so I just wanted to show you guys a couple of fun grid layouts that I've put together. These will be in the template gallery, but they're not quite yet, but they are using some of our fun new artwork for this month. So here's one, and I apologize, I haven't named any of these yet because I've been following around a crazy three-year-old all day. So these are just fun. Um, grid layouts are great because they're easy to customize. You can completely, depending on however many pictures you have, if I have one picture or if I have seven, I could easily switch out any of the boxes in this layout and suit my needs. So it's just kind of fun to play around with. And I will show you a little bit later on, I'm going to customize this, just completely change it up for something totally different. So stay tuned and we'll we'll get there when we get there. Um, go ahead and change it, Stacy. So another fun grid layout, this one I did for Easter and I thought was really fun using our new Hippity Hoppity collection. And just, just a fun way to show that, again, depending on however many pictures you have, grids are great. And it, again, it'll be easier to show this in studio, so these might just be fun to look at for now. But next one, and again, this is super easy, so it would be really easy and fun to just, oh, it's so hard to do it without showing. I might just have to show these all in studio <laughs> if we get there. It's hard to explain. But so if I wanted to take one of these pictures and make it larger, I could easily make it the size of one of the, of 
four of the squares and make one big large one and then have the, the several other smaller ones. So again, just really easy depending on however many pictures you have to just completely change it up to suit your needs. Next. Okay. Oh, okay. So trying to figure out what Stacey's trying to show on this uh, slide. So this last one, the, the colorful one, I'll switch into the handset because apparently my little four-month-old that Chelsea's carrying around in the background can be heard. <laughs> so hopefully this will be a little bit better. Okay, so this one on the right here is just the last of the four that I just put in. So this is fun using our Indian summer collection that we added just a month or two ago. And it's just fun and bright and, again, grid, so really easy to change up and do pretty much whatever you want. You could drop in journal cards to some of these squares. You could write journaling. You could swap in pictures. That's what I love about grids. You can leave it as a set grid, but you can do it however you need to to use as many pictures as you want. I'm a kind of person who takes a lot of pictures, and so I love the versatility of being able to include as many of the ones I love as I want. Or if I only have one picture that I want to showcase on a spread, it's really easy to just do that. So let me go ahead and I'm going to see if I can request control here for a minute and I'm going to show you guys a few things. Okay. And can everybody see my screen? Can you see it, Stacy? I lost my controller, so I'm getting out to see what I can see of yours. So go ahead and let me <laughs> see what I've got going here. Oh, yep, it looks like I can see you. You're good. Okay, good. Good, good. Okay, so if we go into the template gallery, I wanted to show you guys something cool that some of you may know, some of you may not, but we have what's called design guides. They're really fun and really, or sorry, design map. Let's see if I have a brain tonight. But design maps are really great because they give you kind of a blank canvas while giving you a layout to play with. So if it overwhelms you to look at these pre-designed templates with people's pictures and information in there, design maps are a great way to get started. So if we go into the template gallery, you can narrow it by type, and I'm just going to narrow it down to 12 by 12 scrap pages since that's what we're talking about. And so there's a lot here to work with. But if I go over here on the left, I can narrow it down to just ones that have been tagged as design maps. And we have several. We're, we're trying to add new ones all the time, but there are all kinds of different layouts here and different types. So I wanted to just show you guys how to get started with a really simple design map. So we have this one that I made quite some time ago. And you can see whenever we have a design map, we always try to have one that is fully fleshed out so that you can see kind of the potential of how much fun these can be. But there is the basic design map option. And these don't have drop shadows or anything like that. These are just grayscale maps, basically, that make it really easy to start from. So I'm going to personalize one of these. And it just takes it a second to create the project in your account. And then if I go back into my projects and templates and I reload the page, it's here. If I give it a second, it'll stop this and it'll allow me to open it directly from there. But in the interest of time, we're just going to do this way. So then if I open it here to edit. Okay. And as you all should know, when you start, when you open a project in Studio, you'll have the design guides here. And you can turn that off with just this toggle switch up here. It's very important to read these and know what they're talking about. They're different depending on the product type that you're in. But once you know what it's talking about with the bleed area or any of those, you can turn it off. And it just makes it a little easier to see. So I just wanted to give you guys a bit of an idea of what you can do with these design maps. So to get started, here, let's say we have a picture. and. I apologize. I had Stacy grab one for me, but apparently I forgot to upload it before the class, so I'm not going to make you guys wait for me. We'll just pick one of these cute baby pictures, and it'll be just as cute. So if you didn't see what I just did, so it's locked with this pink border, and we have this drop photo here to swap box. I can just pull it up from my photos and drop it right in that box, and it swaps it out. And then 
Notice the baby's a little bit off center, so I'm just going to hit adjust up here in the toolbox and I'm going to slide it over a little bit, making sure to stay in the box so that none of the edges of this photo are getting cut off. But I just want to slide it over and then I can click out or I can click done and it's all cropped. Now, I wanted to show you, I was having fun, I showed you that template that I, that I haven't quite submitted yet using Indian Summer, but I wanted to play with this one a little bit because I got this idea earlier. With these fun circles, you can swap out papers, you could swap out pictures, um, you could even, they don't even have to be circles, you could do whatever you want. But I saw in here as I was making that template earlier, these fun doilies. There's a white one in here too, but how fun is this kind of watercolor doily? So I had the idea to swap these out for doilies. And as I was playing around with it, so it's really easy, just they're, they're locked. If they're not locked, then you won't get that box. But as the elements are locked, you just drag any, and any item, a picture, a background, paper, embellishment, anything, up into that drop here to swap box. And you do have to put it right in there. If you drag it even just outside there, it won't swap it in. So I'm just going to delete that. But just drop it right in. And you'll notice, since these were filled with grayscale papers, they just swap right out. There's no issue. These, so if you can tell, these are buttons that just have a solid fill color on them. But really easy to just take those off, and you could swap in those as well. I'll show you that in just a second. But so same thing with all of these layered backgrounds. So if we pick a few papers that we want, and I apologize if I'm going a little bit fast. We've got a few things to cover in this class. Stacy's going to have some fun showing designing from scratch for scrap pages, which is very fun. Um, but in the interest of time, I'm trying to go a little bit fast. If you have any questions, type them into the question box, and we will we can show things again. So bear with me and just enjoy. So I'm just going to swap in a few fun papers. And, okay. And if I want to add a drop shadow to these, inside the toolbox, just that drop shadow. These you can adjust, but it's got just a set level for a drop shadow to throw that on there. So that just gives it a bit of depth and a little bit more fun. And I'm going to do the same thing here with this um, mat on this photo. And I think instead of the pink, I think I'm going to do this cute green kind of checkered gingham paper. Just a little bit of fun with the green and these leaves on the flowers. And then do the same around the photo. So you can see how quickly we've just added a bit of color to this grayscale map. Really, really, really simple. And again, if I had more photos, I could easily swap them out or even just add them on top, and it would be just fine. So the grayscale maps give you an idea of where to put text or anything like that that you might want on your page. Now, I'm holding down Shift and clicking these. I'm just going to take them off. So I held down Shift, selected all of those, except for this journaling text, because I still want that there. I plan on using it. And then they're locked, so I'm going to unlock them and then just hit delete or backspace on my keyboard and they go away. Now I'm going to, just as a fun easy way of doing a title, I'm going to grab one of these word arts and make sure it is comfortable stretching. So notice how it goes into the yellow. I don't want it to go too big or it might be pixelated when I order it. So I want to keep it in the green and then I think I'll go with what the design map was showing and put it just in this general area just as a really cute kind of a title. It says it was absolutely perfect, which I think is fitting for this cute little baby. And then we've still got these gray buttons sitting here. So if we go up in this collection, there's all kinds of fun things. There are these cute little, oh, I don't know what to call them, little gem candy button type embellishments. Or we've got buttons, or I really like these flowers over here. So we've got this little bit of purple up here. And I think I'm just going to drag in these purple flowers. Now, you'll notice it has a gray cell color on it because that's what the button had. All I have to do is slide off the fill color 
and it's good to go. And I want to give it a drop shadow, just like the couple of other things, just to make it fit. And I think I'm going to do some of them, these pretty pink flowers, just to add a little bit of... So, again, I select it first so that it's selected, and then just drop whatever embellishment into this box. Take off the fill color just because these buttons had it, and then give it a drop shadow. And really, it's quite simple to just keep the layout that was there, but completely change it up for whatever I would like it to be. And if I wanted to move any of these around, easy enough, unlock them, drag them around, and just move it to wherever I want. And really easy to just give it a little bit of personality from a simple grayscale map. So I wanted to just show that, and again, this text box is hanging out here. I can change it to whatever I want. I can change the font or just do whatever I want with it. But I'm not going to go into too much detail with the text boxes because in <laughs> uh, to leave enough time for Stacy to show you designing from scratch. So that's how easy it is to change up a grayscale template. And I want to look quick and see if we had any questions. Oh, someone was asking which art collection this is. So from the art collection tab. This is Indian Summer Elements, and it's such a pretty collection when you agree with so much watercolor type of art. I love this rosy background paper. Let's see if there were any other questions that I didn't see. I think we're good. Okay, and then I wanted to show you guys. So it's really easy to design from a grayscale map. So there's that. But it's just as easy to change up any template in our entire collection of templates. So again, I'm going to turn off the design guide just to give a little bit more viewing space. And sorry, this page is in here because I'm I'm uh, in the process of making these grid layouts into design maps so that we'll have a few new ones. But I wanted to show you guys how easy it is, even with it being pre-designed, to just change things up a little bit. So let's so I'm just going to, and I've got just kind of a selection of, um, oh goodness, uh, stock photos here. So this is a, a account that we use for just the classes. So I don't have much by way of realistic looking photos, but we can use any of these. So say I want to change this up a little bit. So let's just swap out some pictures. Maybe we put this family here, and let's see. Maybe this cute one of the kids right there, and she's a little cut off. So again, we just adjust it, slide it down a little bit. And then maybe mom there. I'm just going to swap out some pictures quick, because that's not the bulk of what I want to show you guys, and so I want to get to showing you as much as we can while we're here. And let's do a couple extra pictures just because we can. So here's dad and daughter. I think that's good for now. Okay. Maybe one. Maybe need this one. Okay. So see how I can put in as many pictures as I want because it's a simple grid layout. So whether you've got one picture or ten, you can make it work for you. Now, so I swapped out the pictures, so I know I'm not going to get confused by the pictures that were in the template. Um, if you don't have your pictures already, it's really easy. Just go into the art collection and type in shape. And there's this shapes collection here that has these photo placeholders that you can easily just swap in to where you know you're going to want photos or even just to replace the template photos so that you're not confused by looking at them or so that you don't accidentally leave a template photo in there. I know we've all been afraid of doing that with massive books. You leave a spread of template photos and then <laughs> you're looking through your completed book and who knows who you're looking at. So it just helps to be able to swap them out and then not have to worry about it. So then we go in the art collection and really we can use any collection we want. I'm just going to show you. Ooh, where is it? There was one I was having fun with earlier. Oh, bear with me. I can't remember the name of it. No, not that far. Heck, let's do a happy family. This is a fun collection. 
Okay, so I like to start with, when I've got a grid like this, I like to start with simple things like um, journaling cards or background papers, just to kind of get a feel for what I want to do. So if we play around, I kind of like the wood background, but we could really do pretty much anything. I like more of a simple background for a grid because that way you can really play up the designs in the grid. So let's pick a couple that go together and and work with the pictures we've got here. So I think I'm thinking I like this brown and I'm going to replace a couple of them with that. And then maybe more of a bright the green. Now a good thing to note when you're doing grids so if I were to swap this same paper into a larger box, you'll see it's scaled up much more. You can see the pattern than it is in this one. So it's really good to match them up as far as the scale. So if I go into the toolbox while it's locked and click Adjust, I can see the scale that it's at. So it's at 15.1. And then if I go into this other one, same thing, just hit Adjust, then I can type in 15.1 and it'll put it at the same scale. If I want, so this is a fairly small pattern, if I want to make it a larger pattern, I still can, I can make it larger, and then I could do the same thing to this one. Now I'm not loving that pattern. Maybe the plaid, put the plaid in these two, and then maybe the green over here, and one more for this bottom one. Oh, just a brown. Oh, and so you see this one isn't locked, so I was going to go drop it in there, and obviously it wouldn't have gone in. So we just lock it and then swap it out. So I want to scale these up a little bit. I'm just going to put in 15. And I like doing that because when it prints, a lot of these solid papers have really nice texture to them. And if it's too small, you won't see that texture. So it's it's good to just give it a little bit of a zoom, a little bit of a scale to it, so that you can see it when it prints. And then if we just pick a couple of these fun word arts, so this one, it, the template had this sitting here, but I don't want to keep that, so I'm just going to delete it. And then if I just grab a couple of these, give them a bit of a drop shadow, and I don't have to, I mean I could give all of these drop shadows or I could give none of them drop shadows, that's entirely up to personal design and whatever you like to see. So if we pick a couple of these, this is kind of fun. Do that instead. Well, that's why. See, I forgot about this guy sitting here because it's such a cute little beach bubble. Okay, so we throw in a couple of those. And Bear with me, I'm having fun with this one. I haven't played with this collection in a while. I was actually playing with this template earlier with a different collection. So this is uh, entirely improv as it were. So hope you're enjoying. <laughs> so let's see, maybe we put up uh, one of these really cute trees. I love this tree in this art collection. I've used it in a lot. So maybe another sky up here with a drop shadow. So if you put a drop shadow on something and then you want to add the exact same drop shadow to everything else, one nifty trick, so if I have this selected and it's got the drop shadow or this is the same for fill colors or borders or any of these effects in the toolbox here. So if I click this tree and then hit copy and then I can click all of these squares here, all of the grid squares and hold down my shift key. So I'm clicking every one of these and then I go to edit paste special paste format and it'll add that exact same formatting so in this case the drop shadow to all of those squares that I had selection it's selected it's just a really easy and quick way to save a little time so let's see and I want to we've got a few other things hanging out here from the template that I want to make sure I get rid of so I'm just going to unlock them and delete and then we'll put our little tree back up here. 
maybe we move this word art to the top and kind of do a bit of a layer here. So I'm doing this a little bit different than I had it laid out in the template, but that's okay. You can make these anything you want. So I want to take away this word art because I don't want it in front of their faces. If I wanted to, this just has a fill color. I could easily move it to a different spot and give it a different fill color that works for this template, like the brown or even this fun blue. But in this case, I'm just going to delete it. Same with this little tab here. Now there are, again, more cute little word arts in this collection that I could easily just pop up here. So you can really have fun with any template, not just a grayscale template, but any of them, and just have a little fun with it. Make it what you want. Let's see. I think Stacy walked off with my four-month-old to keep him happy, so I'm going to have Chelsea run and get her real quick. And then she is going to, Stacy's going to show you guys just some fun tricks and and design tips, really, for designing with Scratch. So you should hopefully see these templates, and I'll do this one that I really <laughs> didn't know was going to happen. I'll play around with this one and get in there, too. So that way you'll have a lot of new fun templates to go with this design map. Are there any questions? I'm going to look and see, but if you've got any other ones, type them in now, and I'll see what we can show. Let's see. Um, this collection, I think someone is asking, this collection is called A Happy Family. This one we added several months ago, I think last summer, but it's a really fun collection. It's versatile. You could use this for just about anything. So it's just, and it's got a lot of different colors. So see, I've stuck with the green and brown with a little bit of this plaid, but you could pull from any of these. You could do red and orange or purple and green or... There are a lot of fun ones. I think Stacy's about there. And this design map does not have a name yet. The other one that we used, I believe, is Crazy, yeah, Crazy Circles is in there. These ones don't have names yet, but look for them in the template gallery in the next couple of days. They'll be right at the top. And if you have any questions, you can always post questions on the Heritage Makers Facebook page, and we get to those really quickly. So if you're wondering in the next few days the names of those. And yes, oh, I was going to show... Sorry, Stacy. We'll delay you for just a sec. You're fine. I was going, I was going to show how to import things into a storybook, and someone just asked. I completely spaced it. So we're going to start a blank 12 by 12 storybook. We'll just call this test. I just wanted to show really quick. It's easy. So whether you find templates that you love that are plain scrap pages, or inside a storybook that you want to make a scrap page. A lot of people will design as scrap pages and then import them into a storybook at the end of the year. It's really easy to just import them in here and then you're good to go. So I opened this blank storybook. I went to one of these inside pages because I didn't want to import it onto the cover just to avoid confusing you guys. Um, and then I go down into the My Projects tab. It's in Current Project. That's automatic when you open any project. So it'll show the pages of the project you're working on, and you can pull up any of those items. I'm going to go into Unfinished Projects and pull up this design map that we just did. So I clicked on it here, and you can search. You can also do it by product type, just however you feel best to find the product that you're looking for, the, the project that you're looking for. So then I click it here, and then you'll see this Import Page button. And it's just going to tell you that, yes, it is going to replace all the items on the page that you're on. So if you're on a page that you don't want to completely erase, go to a blank page. Otherwise, it will completely replace the page. And then just click, yes, import this page. So you're just saying, yes, I understand. I'm going to zoom out a little bit so you guys can see. OK, so you'll see it imported it. Now, our, our scrap pages are true 12 by 12. So they fit in 12 by 12 page protectors. The storybook pages are just a little bit off because the cover of the storybook is 12 by 12 inches. So the interior pages are not perfect 12 by 12. So when I import this, it's not exactly centered and it's not quite square. This, this uh, layout right here is really easy 
for this. So I'm going to select all, so edit, select all, and it'll just grab everything on the page. It's locked, so I'm going to unlock it, and then I can just slide it around. I want to make it a tiny bit smaller altogether so that we get a little more of this brown woody border. But this one, if you notice, if I were to import a grid or something that had perfect borders all around, then on a storybook page it would cut off the sides a little bit because the storybook pages are slightly taller than they are wide. This one shows really well because it doesn't matter if it cuts off a little bit of the excess sides because it's not, it doesn't have a border. So all I have to do is just line it up and if I wanted to get exact I could grab these background pages and center them on the page, but I'm not going to get into that now. We will have a class in the future that will show a little more in the Align and Distribute tools, but that was as easy as it is to import it into a storybook and then you're set. So if you prefer to design your pages as scrapbook pages and then choose to print them as a storybook at the end of the year to give to grandma or to have a copy for your kids, it's really easy to do just using the import page feature. So. Oh, someone wanted to see how to add a text box. Stacey, are you going to go over text boxes at all? I'm not. Do you want to add one? Because it's pretty quick. So if you'll just add yes. one easily, I will then go ahead. Great. Let me delete this one off, and I'll just show you. So in the text boxes tab, these so there's three different options here. They are all basically the same. They just have minor formatting differences. But honestly, anytime I pull up a text box, I just pull up a title one because it's got a little bit larger text and you can format any of these to be exactly the same. So you'll notice they they're a little bit different in shape and font, but they're all they're all text boxes. They all do the exact same thing. So, if we pull up a text box and I want to make it a little bit bigger so I've got room to write and then you can write anything in here. See? So mention so you're sorry that you um double click to get into there. Into where? Oh, oh, into oh, to box. edit a text box. Yeah. So if yeah. I'm dragging it around and then I want to edit, so double click and then click one more time to get your cursor. That can be a little bit confusing. So if you just double click, notice it's showing my cursor, but it's not, it's not flashing anywhere. So if I tell it where I want to type and then to, so to click out of it, to click anything else, just well, click anything else. <laughs> I didn't mean to say it that way, but it works. So just click out of the box and then you can move it around again. You can make it smaller, you can go over into tools under text and you can change the font, you can make it larger. Um, you'll notice, and this is one of the most frequently asked questions in CS, in customer service, so if I want to make my text larger than 150, so this goes up to 100, if you hold down this arrow It'll go up to 150, but what if I'm working on a canvas or if I want something larger than that? So all you have to do, grab one of these edges or corners and hold down Shift and Control, and you can drag it as large as you want. And really, it will go as large as you want. Holding down Shift and Control keeps the proportions locked so that it doesn't stretch or skew the text. If you want to skew it, just hold down control without holding down shift and you can make it look as as funky as you want so I can stretch it or skew it any way I want and it won't lock the proportions if you didn't mean to and then you want the proportions back just push down shift while you're still holding it down and it jumps back so let's see I think that's all of the questions that I see Stacy yep I think you're good Okay. <laughs> if anyone thinks of anything else, let us know, and we can always jump back in. Absolutely. Okay, I'm taking it back. Okay, so we are going to give away some points again. So we already gave out to Marge Mitchell, so let's give away another 25 points. And this time we're going to give them to Tiffany Brigner. Tiffany Brigner, we will get in touch with you about getting you 25 points just for coming to class tonight. So we appreciate you showing up. Now, we're going to go on 
And we're going to talk about some design tips, um, and these design tips are going to be related um, to creating layouts that aren't using templates. So, Shel uh, sorry, Brooke's done a great job of showing you um, how to use templates, and I'm going to show you how easy it is to start from scratch. So if you're looking for something totally different, this is a fun way to do it. And these tips all apply as well to your templates. So if you want to um, think about these things when you're working on a template, you can do that as well. So visual triangle. <clears throat> this has to do with where your eye goes. So if you notice, I've got three pictures on here which kind of create a triangle. But I also have another triangle because I framed this one picture. It makes it stand out more. I have the title coloring eggs and I have this uh, block in the bottom that has my embellishments which also creates a visual triangle. By doing that it allows your eye to focus on things and it gives it a balanced look um, without having to set it up totally in a grid. So visual triangles are a great way um, to set up your page. And I'm going to show you um, how to create one of these pages. Okay, this one is talking about movement and flow. Um, you want someone to look at your page and their eye naturally move through your layout, kind of like when you read a book. If you were to start in the middle of a page reading your book, it wouldn't make any sense. So you want to set up the flow. Now, I did this first one and um, shared it with one of our designers here and she said, yeah, she says, I can see what you're saying about the background having movement. It does draw your eye. But because these, my hounds are all very linear in what in their posing, it doesn't have quite the same movement. So I went and found some different photos and this time I picked photos where the hounds have more movement to them. So they're in circular positions, which helps it flow not just from the top left to the bottom right, but also as you kind of circle around um, through the photos. The other thing I had was, here's Gracie's squishy face. And originally I had Gracie down here and I had Jethro and Hazel up here. And when I looked at it, that meant that Gracie was pointing off the page and Jethro's nose was also pointing off the page. So I flipped the two and that way Gracie is pointing back into the layout rather than off and Jethro's pointing onto the layout also. So those types of things just help you kind of keep uh, the flow going on your layouts. And this last one is about balance and symmetry. Now, grids are by far my favorite way to do a layout because it's quick, it's easy, and um, I know that everything lines up and it looks great. Um, but there are times I don't want to do a grid, but I still want to have that balance and symmetry. And so uh, this approach lets you do that. So I've taken pictures, they're all different sizes, but by making them all the same width, didn't matter what height they were, but they're all two and three quarters inches wide. And then I created these strips in the background with patterned paper um, that are also two and three quarters inches wide. So that gives me um, kind of that symmetry thing and balance, but then I can be asymmetrical in where I place my photos. So you'll notice the photos aren't really lined up in any way. But because I have the balance and symmetry in the background, it helps those pictures flow. Now you'll also notice that I set up my visual triangle here. I have my embellishments here in the lower left. I have some up in the upper right. And I also have these sequins in the bottom. I have a second visual triangle, and that's using this cuddle accent, the snuggle while you can with the ribbon, and the free snuggles board down here. So you can have multiple design triangles within, or visual triangles within your layouts. You don't have to do just one. So um, again, these are some tips of things that you can try. And I'm going to um, hop out of, uh, oops, studio, or out of um, this, and take you into studio. So I'm gonna switch this guy over here. And we're going to start from scratch. So this is my studio right here. And if I want to start a brand new project, I'm going to click on click here to start a new project. And Brooke may have shown you this or she may have started off of a template. But you have two options when you do this. One is do you want to do a template project, which allows you to use one of your templates or template gallery. Or in this case, we're going to start with a blank project. Once I choose blank project, then I'm going to tell it what type of project I'm creating. And I want to create a digital scrap page. So I'm going to go to digital scrapbooking and click on select. 
And then I have my options for sizes. And I'm going to work on a 12 by 12 scrap page. I'm just going to do a single page, not a double page. So I'm going to click on that. I can click on the image or I can click on the word select. Either one will let me go into it. And then it wants to know a name. So we're going to call this one, um, hmm, let's go with, uh, what did I call this one originally? We're going to call this Snuggles. Okay, and now it tells me that it's all set to begin. Click here to begin, and it's going to load me into Studio. And as it comes up, I'm going to have that blank page. It's thinking. It's really hard to set up those blank pages, you know. Okay, so here we are. Now we have our design guides on, and this is telling me about my safe areas and um, you know that I have my bleeds. So I want to try and stay within the dashed lines to make sure everything prints. But when I'm creating my backgrounds, I want to make sure that I go outside of this gray area in case as they trim it, then I don't have to worry about something uh, not being the right color. Okay, I'm going to turn off my design guide by coming up here in the upper right corner and clicking on design guide. That turns that off. And the other thing I do is I come up to the view menu and I turn off the toolbar. Now the toolbar is going to show up when you click on an actual object, whereas the toolbox is this guy here. So I tend to turn off that toolbar. You can turn it back on later on, no big deal. Um, but I like to turn it off. Now, I already know what photos I'm going to use, so I'm going to build my background first. Okay, So I'm going to go into my art collections, and all you do is click on art collection, and you're going to be surprised which one I'm using for this because the pictures are kind of Eastery, but I actually use the collection called Free Snuggles just because those little bunnies and chicks were so snuggly and cute, and the colors match pretty well. So I'm going to open this collection, and it's going to show me everything that I have as options, okay? So the first thing I want to do is I created a cream background on this. I originally had it white, and then I decided, no, the cream kind of ties in nicely. So I'm going to slide over in my papers, and this cream paper right here, I'm going to drag it up and drop it. And I'm going to zoom out just a little bit so I can see my whole page, and I'm going to drag this out so that it's larger than my 12 by 12 page. And because there's no pattern on this, it doesn't matter how much larger it is because I'm not really going to see that pattern. Now, I'm also going to, at this point, I'm going to lock this because as I'm selecting things, I don't want to accidentally select this background. So I'm going to come over here to my toolbox, click on the lock, and so now it has the red selection around it because that is locked. So that means I can add things without having to worry about getting everything uh, messed up. Okay, now I want to work with those. Um, strips of color that I used behind my project. So I selected four different papers. One was this guy, and all I'm going to do is drag it up and just drop them so that I have them all set to go. I did a green one, I did a red one, and I did a pink one. Okay. So I'm going to move this guy over, and I'm going to size it up just a little bit bigger, and you can see that as it does that, it gets um, wider. And I'm actually going to close down my lower half now so I can enlarge this just a little bit so you can see it a little bit better, okay? So I'm going to make it as tall as I want it, and I'm just kind of eyeballing it here, but I know that I want about two inches at the top and bottom, okay? Now what I want to do is I want to make it into a strip, um, and because I don't, I could come in here to layout, and I could turn off lock proportions, and I could squeeze it in tight, but then my circles would be kind of wonky looking. So instead, I'm going to use the crop tool, and I'm going to pull it up here to the top, and pull it down to the bottom, and then I'm going to size it down some. Now, right now, I'm just kind of ballparking it based on what it is, but in a minute, I'm going to show you how I lined it up with my photos. Okay, so there's paper number one. Paper number two, we're going to do, and I just lined these up side by side so that I could see where they were and then enlarge a little bit just to make sure everything's lined up, stretched it down so they're the same height come over to my crop again, resize this, and I'm just lining it up top and bottom. So the blue lines are telling me where it's going to crop it, and the um, 
green lines are telling me the actual size, okay? And again, I'm not stressing about the size for right now because I can come back and size it. Well, once I have one done, I could resize this. But I'm going to hop out just for a minute and I'm going to go grab one of my photos, okay? So I'm going to go to my photos. I have this Easter folder all set up with my album in it. And I want this cute little girl here. So I'm going to drag her up. I'm going to get rid of that, and then I'm going to come here to Layout, and I'm going to resize her so that she's two and three quarters inches wide. So I'm kind of watching my width over there. So you'll see as I size this up and down, this number changes here. I also, once I get kind of in the ballpark, then I come over here, and I'll actually type in 2.75, press Enter, and it will change it for me, okay, 2.75. So now I know this is the width I want. So when I bring it over, I'm like, oops, kind of missed it on that paper. No big deal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to now align the left sides of this picture and this paper so that when I resize it, I know that I have them set up correctly. So I have the little girl's picture selected. I'm holding down my shift key and I'm clicking on the paper and you'll notice that now it's selecting both of them. So the blue boxes tell me the individual items, the big black box tells me I have more than one thing selected. Okay, I'm still on this layout menu and I have some align options, but first I want to make sure I'm aligning the correct way. So down here in the two, it's, I have three options. I have the to group, to the first item, or to the page. Okay, so I'm going to actually do it to the first item, which was the little girl's picture that I selected. So I'm going to do it to the first item. I'm going to click on here, a left align, and so it's going to make sure it's lined up. And wow, I did a great job ballparking that. So that was good. So now I'm going to resize this guy, okay? So I clicked on my paper, not on the girl, but on the paper, and I'm coming over to Tools, and I'm going to, now it says instead of Crop, it says Adjust, because I've already cropped it once. So now I want to adjust it. And I'm going to zoom in so that I can see really well where that cute little girl's picture ends. And I'm going to bring it over so that I am lined up on the edge of that photo. When I'm done, I click on Done, and now you'll see that if I zoom out, I have it set up the same width, okay? So I'm going to repeat that process for this other one here. So I'm going to line up the girl. I'm going to select the paper behind it. I make sure that I have to the first item selected. Click on the left, and you'll see that it just barely scooted over there. Now I can click on my red paper here. I'm going to go back to Tools. I'm going to zoom in a little bit because I'm going to adjust because I want to see where I'm having this line up come over, put it on the edge of the photo, and when I'm done, I click on Done, zoom back out, and I've got two of them done. Okay, I'm going to go grab my third paper. Now this time I'm going to make my life just a little bit easier. I'm going to size it big, so I get it the size I want it to. But you'll notice I'm not quite, the other thing I could do if I really wanted to make sure it's exactly the same size, is I could align those tops too, okay? I'm going to put this cute little girl right here on the edge, and I'm going to click on her, click on the paper, say it with me, make sure I've got two first items selected, click on the line left, and now they're both aligned. Now I'm going to click off of them and click just the paper, and this time when I crop it, I have my little girl here so that I can line things up a little bit easier, okay? So I'm going to go all the way over to the green here, and I go all the way up to the green on the bottom, on the top, and I go all the way to the green on the bottom, and then I'm going to zoom in a little bit more so that when I bring this sideline over, I'm all set up. Okay, when I'm done, I click on Done, zoom back out, and go find my fourth paper. Here's my fourth paper. Bring the little girl over, and I'm going to repeat that same process, okay? So for the sake of time, I'm going to pull off this one. I want to show you a couple other tricks I'm going to do here. Right now, I only have three papers, which is fine. And I want to evenly distribute these. So I'm going to just kind of ballpark line these up. And so first of all, I'm going to make sure they're all lined up across the top. So select the first one, the second one, the third one. And as soon as I select multiple things, it kicks me to the layout menu. And I'm going to make sure that to the first item is lined up. I'm going to this time say I want to line to the top. 
oop, tops are all perfect, that's great. While these are all selected, I have this option here for space. One of them is for horizontal and one of them is for vertical. So it's telling me that if I say I want to space them um, horizontally, evenly spaced them horizontally, if I click on that, it's going to adjust them to make sure I have the same amount of space on the in each of those, okay? I've got my picture here, going to line up my picture right there. I'm going to bring in my two other pictures that I'd like, and I'm going to show you how I did this one because it's a little bit different. Oh, come on, picture, we want to drop you there. And then I also am going to bring in this cute little picture here, and I'm just randomly dropping them. I'm not worried about where I'm putting them, but I'm going to put her in the middle. And again, I want to make sure that um, she's going to be the right width, okay? So the first thing I'm going to do is make sure she's the same height as this other one. So if I click on my first picture, I notice that the height is 4.07. So I'm going to click on this one, and I'm going to scale this down until it's 4.07. That just eliminates one thing I have to do. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my tools, and this time I'm going to crop the photo. So I'm going to slide it up to the top, slide it up to the bottom. It's the exact same process that I did with the papers. Okay, and this time I'm going to line it up with the paper here and the paper here. Zoom it out. Oops, sorry, wrong way. When I'm done, then I have that photo. Oops, but you know what? I forgot to adjust her. I cut off her whole little body. So I'm going to actually do adjust, and it allows me to slide where I want it to be lined up. So if I want to see more of her, I can do that. Now I've got that done and I can slide this over and put it wherever I would like it to be. Okay? So that easily I can readjust my photos, line things up. Okay, so for putting in other objects, we're going to go back to that art collection. I'm going to pull up some of my um, accent pieces that I want to add to my layout. And there were quite a few that I really liked on this one, like the word cuddle. And so again, I'm just going to drag them up here. And then later on, I'm going to align them to where I want them to be. Okay, I'm going to find there was one more that I really liked. Where was it? Best snuggles ever, I think, was what it was. Or there was a round one. We're going to go with those, okay? Now I'm going to come up here, and there are some buttons and flowers and things, and I pretty much just drag the things that I think I might like to play with up on my area to work with. I don't worry about really where I'm placing them because I'm going to come back in just a minute and rearrange things. But this way I have everything that I think I'm going to want available to play with. And I like those sparkly hearts. I think I pulled up one of those little flowers. And the great thing about using a collection like this is that all the colors match. So that makes it really kind of easy. So now I can arrange these however I would like. If I want my flower a little bit smaller, I can do that. I like this little wire heart. Okay, and I'm going to tell you one more trick that I do. Because I know I have these papers where I like them, I'm going to click on the paper and the picture, the picture, the paper, the paper, and I'm going to lock all those. Because as you notice, I keep accidentally clicking on them, and it makes me crazy when I do that. So I'm going to lock them so that I don't get messed up with accidentally moving them. So see, this way I know that I'm just moving the piece I want and not all the papers. So I'm lining up my embellishments wherever it is I think I want them. Okay, I'm going to put my free snuggle sign down over here. I'm going to move my heart down here. And whatever order you bring them in, that's where they, oops, accidentally dragged that one, didn't mean to do that. Um, that's the order they're going to go on top of each other. So as I zoom in on this, you'll see that I am getting some things on top. Well, I don't really want this wire on top, and I really don't want it that big. So I'm going to size it down just a little bit. Position it where I want, and if I want to move it to the back, with this selected along the bottom here, I have send to back, but that would put it behind my cream paper, which I don't want. Send it to backward, which is what I want. Now, you may have to click this a few times, but you'll notice that it actually now has it behind that heart. 
Okay, I can still move it and position it and things, but it's not going to interfere with that heart, which is what I was going for. So, send to back, come backward, allows you to move things around. I'm going to move this guy up here. I'm going to move this little flower. And I like to do things in threes just because it's more pleasing to the eye. We talked about the whole um, visual triangle thing. Also, I do things in different sizes, small, big, little, whatever it is I think it's going to do. And, and I tend to play and rearrange things and do all sorts of things just to get it to exactly where I think I want to have it. Okay, and then I love sequins. So I want to add some sequins to this page. And to do that, I'm going to actually, I'm going to slide this down a little bit so you can see my search. And I want gold sequins that so will match. So I'm going to type in gold sequins. It's going to search for me and find some gold. And you'll see I have shiny gold, flat gold, and this kind of bright gold. Well, if I look, I actually drug these all up because I wanted to see how it looked next to the pieces I already had that were gold. So I brought them up and I looked at this one and he is really shiny compared to my gold. And so I decided I didn't want that one, so I'm just going to delete it. Okay, I do have this guy, and he's okay. Let's see what this one looks like. And as I looked at them, I decided that I really like the look of this gold better than this one. If you want them to really stand out, you can go with that one. But I went with this other guy. So I brought my sequins down here, and I like to kind of rotate them around, twist them around, get them in the spots I want, and then you'll notice that these are sitting on top. So if I zoom in here, oops, right on top of that heart. And I don't really want that. So with this selected, I'm going to come up here and I'm going to use send backward. I'm going to send backward a couple times until it's behind it. Now, the thing is I may want it to show up on top of the paper. So like if I scooted this over, it's on top of the paper. But I don't want it on top of this other flower. So I may need to send it backward again. So I just keep clicking send to back and backward until it's behind it. Now once I've decided that looks good, then um, I take this and I copy it. So with it selected, go to edit and copy or you can do con command or control C. And I do edit and paste. And that gives me a second set that I can then move around and rotate, do all sorts of things so that it gives it kind of a more of a random look instead of having it be a whole ton of these and actually I'm going to flip this because I want to have this chunky area behind it. So here I have flip. Flip horizontal means just like it says it's going to do it left to right. If I flip vertical to do top to bottom. So I want to flip horizontal. So as soon as I did that it moved all those chunky pieces out so that now if I go around like this then it gives me a little more balance and I've actually decided I need to send that backwards. So I'm going to send it back a bit so it's behind the wire and everything. And I just continue doing that until I've got sequence placed, I've got my photos placed, and that easy you can create a layout. It's not hard, doesn't need to be overwhelming. You can line up things however you want. You can make them very scattered. Um, but it's very easy to set up a layout using just your um, your um, papers and things, okay? So again, I want to come back and show you um, these samples that I had. I'm going to go back to my PowerPoint. We're just going to go through them one more time just so you can see again. So this one is using the visual triangle where we have um, our three items, the frame, this conglomeration here, and your title, okay? And the next one, we've got our movement by scattering a whole bunch of things. So you'll see I have sequins, I have flare, I have, these are called splatters, these paint guys, I have buttons, and you just layer them on top of each other and decide which ones you want to be high, which ones to be low throw a little string in there. And if you're more of a clean, simple gal, you don't have to have this much stuff on there. You can just do a line of paper that goes through and that will give you your movement. So, you know, use whatever style you're comfortable with. 
And then we have this one that's showing us our balance and symmetry where we again have our visual triangles that are set up in here, but we also are using these three strips of paper, four strips of paper, sorry, to create the balance so that we can have our photos a little more haphazard. So I hope that makes sense and that you'll give it a try um, doing those, uh, the um, starting from scratch. Okay, I have a question. On the pages made, you can you show how you can change out the paper if maybe you changed your mind on the pattern paper? Absolutely. So let me get out of my, oops, don't want to leave, leave my webinar. Let me pull it back over so you can see. Okay, so you're saying if I decide I didn't really want this one, maybe I want this guy here, okay? So I am actually going to delete this because I need to go pull it out of my collection. So I first want to make sure it's selected in red, that it's locked, okay? If it's not locked, like if I select free snuggles here, it is not going to let me um, drag and drop into it. So if I were to drag this and drop it, it would just drop it right on top, and I don't want to do that. Okay, so what I do want to do though is select this guy. Oops, and now I have this really cool little sequin that we're going to get rid of him. So I'm going to select him. Remember, he's locked, and I can tell because I have my little lock here. I'm going to go back to home because that'll take me back to all my collections since this is a recent one. I'm going to click on um, Snuggles and get this one going here. And I'm going to pull these up, and I'm going to pull up this green paper. Now, when I do that, notice it says drop art here to swap. When I drop it, it drops it right in. If I decide, oops, that's really not what I wanted, let's try, how about this yellowy one? Again, pull it up, drop art here to swap, and it puts it in that easily. Okay, so I can swap out those papers without having to do much of anything. All right, let's see what else we got in store here. Uh, we are going to give away our last 25 points for the night, and so our last person that we're going to give them to is Kathy, no, oh, Kathy Dowett, D-O-U-A-T, you win our third set of points, and I am so sorry for probably mispronouncing your last name. Let me show you a little bit about the artwork we have it coming in March, which is just a few days away. This is a basic collection that's called My Crazy Life. I don't know about you, but uh, crazy happens. In fact, you saw crazy here tonight. So maybe we'll have to scrapbook tonight. But I love this collection. It's so real to life. Mom piled with laundry. Look at this clock with the numbers all over the place. But I think my favorite thing are these quotes. Momster, what happens to mom after she counts to three? Or this one. And we've actually sized these so they'll fit nicely on canvases or larger prints. But this one says, welcome to our happy, crazy, loud, fun, messy, caring, loving home. So that's a great one. And it is a basic. And you'll see it has lots of artwork and it has lots of papers. So watch for that one, March. And this next one is Lime in the Coconut. Now, you may be thinking, I haven't even gone on my vacation yet. But I don't know about you. I still have a vacation and thing, pictures from a long time ago. So this one is going to give you some fun options. It has lots of wood, like this paper here that has, these are all wood grains in different colors, like this font. I love ampersands, and this one's beautiful. It has some rhinestone-y accents, like this butterfly one. It has signs like this, and it has some really fun word art that has different sizes, and it's rotated different ways. There's so many great things in this. But the thing I love, too, is that these papers and colors are things that you could use any time of year, like this teal polka dot or this polka dot that has the white background there, stripes. Um, it doesn't have to just be for vacation. So watch for Lime in the Coconut and My Crazy Life coming in March. Okay, we are going to have our next class on March 17th. And while this one was digital scrapbooking, so it was focused on um, kind of a product, but base, really concepts. Next time we're going to focus on products. We want to show you things that you can do with templates and canvases. I'm sorry, not templates, canvases, metal prints, wood prints, any kind of home decor thing you can think of. We're going to show you tips and tricks on how to make beautiful home decor pieces. Again, March 17th. So make sure you get signed up for that. 
Okay, we have one other question. It says, when I'm searching templates in Template Gallery, I define what I want to search. For instance, say I chose Home Decor 11 by 14. So it pulls up one page's worth of templates. It says there are a lot more templates available, but I can't see. Oh, yeah, that makes total sense. Um, and I don't know why sometimes that happens, but if I have that happen, I will uh, jump out and come back in. So what you're saying is, You've narrowed it down, so you said, okay, I want home decor, and I want 11 by 14 prints, and it says 596. As you scroll down, it eventually doesn't show you all 596. Now, tonight it's doing it for me. But every now and then, it kind of gets a little head stuck. So I will either click on Reset Gallery, or I'll actually go back to the Heritage Makers homepage and then come back in again. It's just a quirky thing. It's nothing you're doing wrong. It just sometimes gets a little bug stuck in its head. So hopefully that helps. Any other last questions before we let you go for the evening? We are so glad you joined us and hope that this has been beneficial information that you're going to get caught up on your scrapbooking or get started on your scrapbooking, whichever one you are wanting to do. And um, that you're inspired to go out and create Thank you again so much for joining us. And again, we'll have this posted soon so that you can watch it again if you would like. And then join us March 17th at 7 p.m. Mountain Time for Home Decor Made Easy. Thank you so much. Thanks, Brooke and Chelsea, for helping out tonight. And we will see you soon. Bye.